were born blind, buried in feathers, pressed to the dirt by a giant claw. Your mother's beak snaps inches from your head, bone cracks, blood spatters. You squeak, barely audible. She ignores you. Out there in the prehistoric jungle, everything wants to eat you. Even now, you can smell death on the wind. Your mother is a titan, towering over most predators, her beak splitting bone like wet paper, legs strong enough to kick the soul out of a jaguar. But you? You're just a weird fluffy chicken nugget. You're slow, you're helpless, and worst of all, you're delicious. She doesn't nest for long. The longer she stays, the more likely something smells her out. So you're on the move early, stumbling through thick underbrush as she patrols ahead. Fall behind? Too bad. Weakness smells like dinner. Weeks pass. Your downy fluff is replaced by coarse, dirty feathers. You finally grow into your feet, fast, but not fast enough. You chase a rat-like mammal into a bush and come back with a tail in your beak. It's messy, but it's a win. You're not a hunter in the traditional sense. You're a blitz predator, ambush, strike, kill. Think cheetah meets medieval weapon. Your mother doesn't teach you how to hunt. She just hunts and expects you to figure it out. She dismembers a giant rodent in front of you without blinking. If you gag, that's on you. But even the best predators have rivals. One morning, you wake to the stench of blood and the sound of snarling. A pack of prehistoric dogs circles the remains of a kill. Your mother lowers her head, feathers bristling. She charges, scattering the pack, but not before one snatches a chunk of meat and vanishes into the brush. You learn. In this world, even victory means sharing with thieves. Then comes your first real test. A shadow moves in the tall grass. Massive, saber-shaped teeth, fur that ripples. Not a jaguar, not a bear. It's a Smilodon, a saber-toothed cat, prehistoric nightmare with knives for teeth and a bad attitude. Your mother lowers her head, feathers bristling, no warning, no mercy. She explodes forward, beak first, slamming into fur and fangs. The cat screams, claws rake her side. You hear flesh tear, blood spatters your face. You freeze, heart pounding. The fight is chaos, kicks, bites, shrieks, then silence. Smilodon limps away, bleeding. Your mother stands over you, chest heaving. You learn, survival is violence. By your first year, you're a walking contradiction. Part bird, part dinosaur, part rage. Your beak could crush a skull in one blow. Your legs are built for sprinting short distances. You can't fly, no wings, but you don't need to. You dominate the forest floor, but you know pain now. A venomous snake strikes your leg. You scream, stumble, panic but you don't die, you adapt. Now you look for the twitch of a tail in the grass. You don't fear snakes anymore, you hunt them. Life is violence on repeat. You run down a juvenile glyptodont, hammer your beak into its neck before it can turn. You ambush scavengers near kills you didn't make. You take what you want because nobody gives you anything. And when another terror bird enters your territory, you fight, no screeching, no warning, you charge. Beaks clash, claws slash, feathers fly. Pain explodes in your leg. You bite, you kick, you don't stop. Only one of you will walk away. Today, it's you. Next time, maybe not. But even the strongest have weaknesses. You can't climb trees. You can't swim well. You're trapped on the forest floor, and the forest is changing. Predators from the north, large cats, dogs, are migrating into your territory. They're smarter. They hunt W. Grupash. They trap, ambush, wear you down. They don't fight fair, and they don't fight alone. You try to ambush a pack of dire wolves and realize, too late, they've circled you. You get out, but not without a limp. You've lost a step. In this world, one step can be the difference between predator and prey. But you're not just a hunter, you're also prey. One day, as you stalk the riverbank, a giant caiman lunges from the water. You leap back, but its jaws snap shut where your leg was a second earlier. Your heart hammers. You run, feathers dripping, realizing that even the river is an enemy. The dry season comes. Water holes shrink. You fight for every drop, against other terror birds, against armored glyptodonts, even against herds of giant ground sloths. The sun beats down, hunger gnaws. You risk everything for a mouthful of water, a scrap of meat. Then, the storms. Lightning splits the sky, igniting wildfires. Smoke chokes the forest. You run, blinded, as flames race through the underbrush. You survive, but the land is scarred, and so are you. You reach maturity, scarred, respected, alone. No mate, no pack, just instinct and momentum. You've claimed your land, fought off rivals, and built a routine around blood and grit. One day, you spot movement, 
a juvenile terror bird. You snarl, prepare to chase it off, but it doesn't run. It mimics your stance, tilts its head just like you. For a moment, it looks like your shadow. Then it charges at a rabbit, misses, and flops into a tree. You pause, then walk away. Maybe for now, someone else can carry the nightmare forward. When your end comes, it's not with a bang. You've outrun predators, outfought rivals, outlived most of your kin. But you can't outrun extinction. The forest thin, the prey vanish. You lie beneath a dying tree, breathing slowly, watching vultures circle a sky you'll never fly. No monuments, no nest, just bones in dirt, waiting to be rediscovered. Millions of years later, humans dig up your skull. They call you Forest Rakos, or Terror Bird, and debate whether you were the ultimate killer or just a glorified scavenger. They hold your beak and imagine the damage it could do. They don't realize how hard it was to survive in your world, how your strength was never enough how your power came with a ticking clock, and how sometimes being built to kill isn't enough to keep you alive. Would you survive a day as a terror bird? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more brutal stories from prehistory.